Hello. I'm, I'm Garu. Uh, and I'm here to talk uh, a bit about uh, game development using uh, Perl and SDL, which is, of course, uh, offline gaming. I mean, you, you could do it uh, online, but I, I don't mean web-based games. So, to, to start the talk, you would actually have to know uh, a couple of things. One of them, of course, is Perl, which I assume you have it, it all covered, you know? But uh, there's this other thing called SDL, and some of you might not know what it is. So, uh, SDL stands for Simple Direct Media Layer, and it's, it's kind of a, a library that allows you to have low-level access to video, to audio, and your, your computer's input devices, you know, or your, your console's input devices. And it's also cross-platform, which means it, it will run uh, and it, it will abstract uh, a lot of the, the, the really low-level stuff for you. you know, even though it, it is kind of low-level, it keeps things uh, homogenic across platforms. You, know, you can use the same code and compile it for, for Windows and, and for, for Linux and for OS X and some others too. It, it's also important to mention that the, the code from uh, S, LibSDL is uh, LGPL version 2, which means that you can write your code using uh, SDL and release it uh, closed source or open source, it doesn't matter as long as you link with a shared library of SDL. And it can be a commercial, pro, uh, commercial game or a, a, an open source one. Now, so let's start with, with SDL. The, the first thing that... SDL is, is a rather old module from, from Perl, but the first... Uh, it's, in its first life, it was actually really uh, mixing up a lot of uh, the Perlish stuff along with the, the library calls themselves. So what, what Kartik did when he took over the SDL project was he decided that the API would be one-to-one -one with the C library. So uh, it, this gives us a lot of advantages. First, it's easier to, to, to trace errors and bad behavior and memory leaks. But it also gives us instant documentation because uh, that you can just look at the, the the actual library's documentation, and you'll see the, 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 the function calls, and you'll probably get something really equivalent in uh, Perl SDL. But, the code you'll see looks kind of like this. You know, this is a simple example of, uh, of uh, an SDL program, a Perl SDL Perl program, and basically what you have to do is, you have to use a whole bunch of modules then you have to initialize SDL, your video actually, and then this set the video mode, and then map your, your color, and fill an entire rect with, with a call to SDL video, which probably doesn't mean anything uh, to you at this point. So, and then update your, your rectangles and, and, and stuff like that. And it's, it, it can get really confusing because it's too low level, you know? This is like a one-to-one -one wrapper with the, the C API. So, uh, Perl developers are, are more used to you know, coding stuff with a more uh, higher level. So, and, and this is not Perlish at all. So what we do is we try to add some sugar to it. You know, we try to make it uh, more Perlish, but not in the SDL colon colon namespace, but rather on the SDL extension uh, namespace. So we have a whole lot of things that can make your life easier. For example, that same code uh, now becomes just uh, three uh, commands, you know. First, you, instead of loading all that stuff, you just use SDLX app. Then, you just create a new SDL application with this width and this height. Then you draw a rect. With, and this is the, the, the X, Y, width and height, and that's the color in the plain RGBA uh, fashion, you know? And then you ask uh, your app to update itself, so it can show this, the stuff that you, you've drawn in the, on, on the canvas, on the screen, 
and then just sleep to, to see it through, you know? And uh, I might not have it here, but that's okay. So now, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of things that we can add to, to SDL to make things uh, more polished and make, make game development easier. Now, one of the things that are really common during game development is the game loop. You know, most games have one, you know, I, I, I can't really remember any game that doesn't have one. <coughs> but it basically is kind of like this. You know, while your program is running, you have to query the system for events. Then you have to update your game, your game state, you know, whatever the, the players are and the values, their lives and whatnot. And then you have to render the scene, you know. But this has a very big problem. And the, the problem is, it doesn't scale very well. In fact, it doesn't scale well at all. The, the, the reason why I say this is because this is how uh, those old MS-DOS uh, games were made. You know, like uh, the ones that if you play on a modern PC, you get them really, really, really fast. And you won't be able to play at all. So. It doesn't take advantage of, of faster CPUs, it actually makes your game faster. And if you actually downgrade your, your, your hardware, it can make your game totally unplayable because it's just too slow. Now, the proper way to do uh, game loops is a bit more confusing, you know? You have to uh, check the, the tick counts and you have to make sure that your events are updated in a, in, in a fixed uh, frames per rate or times per rate per, per second. And, and yet, you will want to, to have your scene rendered as fast as possible. So, it, it'll get uh, your game going with a, a rather smooth animation, but to do that you have to pass the interpolation variable. So it's all really confusing, you know? It's, it's still not too polished, and it's still, you have to do this over and over again, and it sucks. So what we do is instead we create this little uh, method called uh, run, which does that for you. So you don't have to worry about that at all. So now, for a full game, you could do something like that. Now, I mean, where would you put your, your motion handlers, or where would you put your, your rendering actions, or your event handling? This is what you do. You create your, your SDL app, app, and then you add some move handlers, and you could add as much as you want. And then you could add your event handlers uh, for each uh, player. And whenever the, the at, at that game loop that I mentioned, whenever the, the the, it was time, it would be time for you to update your game, all the, the subroutines that you added uh, as move handlers will be called in order. And the same thing for events. Whenever a new event is spawned, like the user clicking on the key or moving the keyboard or uh, whatever you want, uh, the, the proper event handler will be called. Or rather, the, the, the whole subroutine will be called and with the event that occurred and you'll be able to uh, pick it up and figure out uh, what kind of event it was. And you can also add the show handler and again as many show handlers as you want to just render stuff on screen. And all of those, after you, you call run, all of those will be called uh, in the proper way without you having to worry about writing your own game loop. So, and it really tries to do, to do the right thing. And it, it, it's actually quite amazing how it, it, it accomplishes that. So, but still, this is a bit ugly, which is why we, we're trying to do uh, the, the, what we call the, the Avenger initiative, which is, yeah, okay. And it's basically a more sugary syntax for those things. So, instead of, uh, and, and it looks, if you've seen a uh, code such as uh, Sinatra or Dancer or, or, or Mojolicious, you probably see some similarities. I mean, we have a, a, a small DSL that we just say, use Avenger, this is my, the title of my game, and then you say update, and there's a subroutine, and you can add as much update queries as you want. You can do the same thing for show, and 
it does add uh, more sugar to, to the event because you can actually label your events and you say like event key down do this so in the event of a key down on a, on a keyboard it will just call this one and not that one that one will be called only when the left mouse button is pressed so it gives you more granularity, granularity to work on your games and then afterwards you just say start and it works so this is actually not on CPAN yet it's on github I'll give you the, uh, the address in a short while so another thing that Avenger does and this is really nice because it has Box2D integration now Box2D is a physics uh, engine that uh, allows you to do really fast uh, physics in Perl. Well, actually it's in C, but uh, we, have the, we have been working on this wrapper that uh, can, can do the same thing. It's like a one-to-one -one and it's really hard, but Avenger tries to, to, to lower this barrier by making collision really uh, easy or easier in Perl. And here's an example. This is actually a full game. It doesn't do much, but you can call it a game. Uh, first you start, you say, like, my game, and then you set your world to a certain gravity. You know, like, because I want my game to have, gra my game to have gravity. And uh, then you say, like, I want to create a dynamic body, and I want to create a static floor. A dynamic body for, for a player, and a static floor for, uh, for the player to stand on. And then, I call it, and I, and I say like, well, the update uh, handler should just update the world state. And the world is how we access Box2D, how we access the physics engine. Here we're saying, I want a, a, a dynamic object with, at this position, and just turn it into a, a square. And you can model it at whatever, whatever you want. But just to, to, to keep the example short, I just use the default. And the same thing for create static, which will just create something at that position with that height. And then, for my showing uh, method, I just say, clear the screen, draw the floor using uh, green, then draw the player using red-ish, then update the screen. And then I say start. And this is what happens. You have the, the little thingy. And you can see that two things happen here. First, <coughs> it actually fell because of gravity. And you didn't have to code anything. You just said, my world has gravity. <laughs> and it works. That's Box2D. That's awesome. The second thing is that you, you can't really see it because of, of uh, the, the lower resolution on the screen for the presentation. But it, uh, you, you see here that... I can try to... No. You can see here from the translucent thingy, there's your ground. You see? And that's another thing you get for free using uh, stuff like Avenger and Box2D. Because since I said I want to create a static thing, well, it knows that a dynamic, a static thing doesn't move, but it, it actually uh, collides with the, the dynamic body and it won't let the, the, the thingy cross the entire screen. It will actually stop like a platformer. And you didn't have to code anything for it to achieve that, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's basically kind of the, the, the mo motto we're trying to achieve with the new uh, SDL Perl initiative, you know, in general. We want to make simple games in Perl really easy. And we want to make complex games possible. And Avenger actually uh, took advantage of this because we've had a competition in, in last March, you know, last year. And 
it was awesome. We had like 16 games made in a, a single month. And it kind of drove us into thinking about uh, uh, patterns that actually emerged in, in, in game development in Perl. So we tried to use some of it in stuff like uh, the, the STLX namespace and the, the Avenger uh, framework. So this is what you can do if your game is too big or if you don't want to use a, a single script. You can just uh, do your, your script like uh, use Avenger, use my game and start on the main screen. And then you can write your package called uh, my game main screen and use Avenger and you have the load, the unload, with the, the load of course will be called during initialization, the unload during this destruction and then we'll have uh, the update, you can add as much updates you, as you want, as much event handlers as you want, just like uh, you did with the single script, except now it's a separate module. And you can have as many of those as you want. And in the middle of the update thing, you can just say start some other part of the game. And it will, just, it will unload itself, and then you you will load the other part of your game. So you can have several screens, you know, like a, a, a greeting screen, and then uh, uh, the, the in intro, and uh, several, several screens. And it just makes uh, the development really easier. Now, there are other uh, things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. And there are several, several other uh, SDLX uh, goodies that you can add to make your game development easier in Perl. And we, we're still doing this, and we're still, uh, we're actually doing what we do best, which is look at several other frameworks, you know? We've checked out Pygame, we've checked out uh, XNA, and which is uh, the, the framework that uh, does uh, Xbox games. And it's, uh, it's really cool because we can just look at them and, you know, steal or borrow what works and leave off what doesn't really matter to us. So, one of the things that we did was we created uh, the SDLX widget package, which has, uh, well, not as much uh, widgets as I, I hope it, it did, but we're still developing them. But one of them that's already there on CPAN is the SDL widget menu, which lets you do stuff like, I want to create a new menu, and I wanted to have those options and each of them going to a certain uh, part of my program. And you just at your show uh, uh, engine, be it uh, the show from Avenger or the add show handler from SDLX app, you just say menu, render and pass on your app screen. So it will actually take that screen and render this menu on it. And let you add, and it automatically add all the events, you know, like key up and key down, and mouse clicking and everything like that. So you instantly have, with uh, just as many lines as you need options, you have your menu working. You know. Another thing that's really cool is the SCLX text, and we stole this from XNA, and we actually, uh, I think, we we kind of uh, make it better because we we can, could add uh, a couple more options in it. And one of those, well, you, you can do uh, several alignments in your text, and basically, all of those are optional, you know? You don't even have to specify a font, because we actually bring a font with us, uh, a, a default font, true type one. And you can just say, my text equal, equals SDL uh, text new, and pass all sorts of parameters. You can pass. You can add shadow. You can add bold text. Uh, it's already Unicode, so it doesn't matter what language you're typing. Uh, it works with Unicode with UTF-8. And then you just say, "I want to write to this," and you can use uh, your full app, or you can use uh, a particular surface that you have in your game. And you say, "I want to write this," and it will do it for you. And uh, at any position you want. In fact, this is default, of course, to 0, 0, which in SDL is the top left corner. But uh, you could actually say, like, X is uh, 30 and Y is, I don't know, maybe uh, apps, the, the apps height divided by 2 or something like that. 
So another thing that's cool is SDL music, because what would be of a game if it didn't have any music in it? So what you can do is also, again, it's really easy. It's you just SDL music new, and then you create your your music data. You just say like intro will have uh, three loops, uh, 0.5 seconds of fading, and a 72 decibel volume. Well, not decibel, but anyway. But uh, and, and game over will have, uh, whenever it's finished, game over will call this subroutine. You know, so it also lets you do a lot of stuff uh, with music integrating to your game. And the, the cool thing is, if you have, it has a default uh, directory to search and a default file extension, which is uh, OGG. So if you have uh, inside your, your game, uh, if you have the, the, the data directory with uh, the intro.ogg and gameover.ogg, <coughs> this already works. And otherwise, you can just, you can label it whatever you want and just say file and pass the file name at whatever path you want. And then you just say at any point in your program, you just say like, music play this. And you pass on the, the, the key, and it also works. There's also a, a huge to-do list. So if, you got, if, if I managed to get you interested in it, in it uh, it would be great if you could help. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do. There's a lot of, uh, of games to be made. You know, beat like bug requests, uh, well, feature requests or bug reports. And you could also, yeah, no, bug requests wouldn't work. <laughs> But uh, uh, either way, we have lots and lots and lots of things to do. And the best way to know that we're doing a good job <coughs> is if people start uh, doing the, the, the games and developing stuff in SDL so they can let us know where we screwed up. You know, like, this is wrong, this is bad, this is not working for me, and then we can fix it. Uh, you should be aware, like, stuff, things like... Uh, SDL and the SDL app, uh, SDLX uh, namespace that comes with the core SDL Perl is actually pretty stable. Although Avenger, for example, is pretty much alpha code, so stuff might break. But it's good that it breaks because you let me know and I'll fix it. So here's more info if you need it. Uh, we have this uh, huge community going on, it's called uh, Perl Game Dev on GitHub. And we have several, several projects in there, and lots of games too, so you can check them out. Uh, I wanted to show you something else. Oh, okay. All right. So there's also uh, the IRC on the, the, the hash SDL channel. The, there's the mailing list, and there's, of course, Twitter. Now, let me show you just another one. And this is uh, really nice because... I, I show you the, the, the sample thing, and if you look at it, you see that it's, it's the very same code that I showed you, you know, on the, on the slides. But if you add just a little bit more stuff in it, like this, and you have like the title, and you, you add the, your guide, those are optional parameters that you can also add to the, the collision detection system, to boss 2 d stuff like friction and density. And then you create your body like we did back then, but then we cre create two events, you know, <coughs> one for key down, which will, will uh, change the, the, the guy's velocity when, whenever the, the proper key, whether it's up or left or right, is pressed. And then we have uh, the, the mouse left, which will create new bodies whenever you press the left mouse key. And other than that, it's just this, uh, the same thing like drawing the, the, the rect, drawing the, the, filling up the, the, the screen, and drawing the floor, drawing all the walls that were created with the, your mouse, and then draw, drawing your character. So if you run it, you have this. But now, it actually moves and jumps. You've seen it? Nice. And you can also, 
uh, I mentioned the left click, so we can do like this and 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 whatever you want, you know? And you could just kind of jump around, you know? Very cool. So, and of course, since my code, oh, it's falling, yeah, okay. So, there you are. So, and it's that easy to do stuff like that in the new STL Perl. So you really should try it, and I, I hope uh, I managed to get you guys as excited as I am about the project. And, well, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, STLX, STLX app looks, looks awesome. Is there any documentation for other than your presentation right now for SDLX app, or is that very new? Right? No, actually, there's a lot of documentation. Okay. And if you find any problems, you should let us know, because we've taken good care of making things. I mentioned that, uh, that uh, having a one-to-one -one, uh, wrapper with SDL made us not have any documentation. But in fact, we wrote a lot of documentation, and especially for the SDLX namespace. So stuff like SDLX, uh, app and SDLX uh, controller and well I missed something here there, there was there was supposed to be another uh, thing here but anyway there's also something really cool which is called uh, the SDLX uh, sprite animated and what it does is that it gets a, a sprite sheet you know what a sprite sheet is let me you know what a sprite is uh, let me try and get this for you. It was supposed to be in this version. I don't know what happened. Let me just. Uh... No, it's not there. Anyway, uh, a sprite sheet is basically uh, an image that has the same uh, character in several different motions, you know, like pictures of him doing like this and this and this, okay, you know? sure. and usually when you, when you do animations in, in, in games, you could just uh, grab a sprite sheet that has all the movement of your character and just say, well, I want this bit of that image rendered now and then uh, afterwards I want this one and then this one and then this one and this one and it, it, when it runs fast enough you, you get the notion of, of movement just like the movies, you know? So what STLX Sprite Animated does is that if you have a sprite sheet you can just say uh, I want to load this file and you say start and it will start animating it as long as the the, the biggest uh, size of your image is actually a multiple of the, the lower one it, it will actually be able to divide it into even equal, sp uh, equal spaces you know and equal pieces and it will render them automatically for you so you have to do absolutely no code to get animation and it works, you know. That for some reason it slipped the slides, but but it's there. I can show you afterwards. Uh, just a quick question: How do you guys? And all of those are documented. <coughs> yeah. uh, how do you generate the actual uh, glue layer to like SDL? Let's say a new version of SDL comes out. Are you guys manually writing all that glue code, or using like Swig or something? Like no, that? we're actually doing it manually. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. because we've had a, 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 a terrible experience before with a lot of memory leaks sure. and stuff that wouldn't actually uh, be properly uh, displayed as a, as a Perl uh, that data structure, you know. So we had to, to, to make sure everything was okay and that took a lot of time and gave us a lot of trouble. But 
we're actually, uh, since we're a pretty uh, lively community, we're actually, uh, the whole SDL 1.2 is being worked on. Well, it's basically done. And there's SDL 1.3, which is something of a developer's release, you know, in actually lib SDL. And we're doing it, uh, we're trying to, to get it uh, to work, the, the new version that is, with uh, Perl. But we're, we're going to wait for it to be released as a, as a production uh, library before we actually uh, push up the, the new release to CPAP. Cool. Sweet. Yeah, this stuff, this stuff looks awesome. Uh, I think Google Summer of Code and Google Code is a really good place to ask for help because well, yeah. this really connects with younger students. I mean, a lot of young people that are interested in computer science, they want to make games that they should know about. SDL. Yeah, probably, yeah.